Welcome to the In Story Show. I'm Devorah Stillman, your host, and today I am thrilled to welcome In Story expert Leslie Brown. Hi, Leslie. Hi there. <laughs> so <laughs> Leslie is a holistic life coach and guide, and you'll see why she's kind of an embodiment guide. I can't call yourself that, but we're going to dive into what that means. <laughs> what does it mean to really get embodied, to not just be creative in your head, and how that is part of what we have to do to come out of hiding? So before we dive into all that, like everybody else, I like uh, this summit, I've had everybody really share a little bit about what were you like when you were a little kid? <laughs> Okay. Um, I was a little wild child. I'm the middle of five kids. So I have two older brothers and we lived in a neighborhood. We lived on my grandparents' property when they had a bit, very big Victorian house, which I could explore during the day. But then I was outside most of the time and we lived backed up to a cul-de-sac, which in you know, a neighborhood in a rural area. We had streams, you know, running through the property. So I was out playing with polywogs. I was out playing with the dogs in the neighborhood. I was out playing with the boys in the neighborhood. There was a couple trampolines in the neighborhood. So we were bouncing and jumping and playing all over the place most of the time. And then there would be a bell at nighttime calling us home for dinner. And so, so kind of tell us your story about, you know, that, like, tell us your moment of that really amazing thing that happened to you when you were a little kid and how, you know, everyone's talking a little bit about how you have this natural expression as a kid, but how you couldn't be that way all the time. Okay. You mean the lightning incident? Okay. So I was in a cabin um, being bathed by my mother. I was, sit I was four years old. I was sitting in a sink and she was giving me a bath and there was a lightning storm outside and the pump house got hit by lightning and it shot it through the sink. So apparently I jumped out of the sink and I wonder whether I had, um, you know, like a near death experience or some sort of experience with that because I've always seen much more of the world than my family did. And I do remember right after that time was when I would hear my mother saying a lot, go to your room, Leslie, no one wants to hear what you have to say. So I don't know whether I was reporting back of things that I had seen in that experience, um, but it wasn't, we, it was a very Catholic household. So there was a very limited amount of beliefs that you could have. Um, so I, I think that that my nature connection got a little bit shut down there. And okay, so keep moving us forward. So you know, clearly you had like so many of my speakers, this incredible connection to nature and then this expanded consciousness. So where did you guys go next? Okay. So then when I was nine, we moved away from my grandparents and moved onto a horse farm. My brother, one of my older brothers was getting into the horse business and I started riding when I was around 13. So I was in the barn every afternoon after school. We were having manure fights with each other. We were riding our horses in the afternoons. So the box, I came out of the box even more when I was riding horses because it was a wild, afternoons in the barn was a wild and crazy adventure. And then connecting with the horse, there's a lot of power in the horse. But then we would come up from the barn for dinner and the box was even tighter. So it was like coming out and then it was being shoved back in. So it was very confusing because I wasn't really sure. There was no in between. It was either completely shut down or completely open. Right, and you, it was, and you couldn't bring those worlds together. No. At that time. No. Okay, so tell us a little bit about what you did once you left home. Uh, you mean college? Yeah. Okay, I, I attempted college three times. I, I did have an English teacher that told me that I was quite talented with writing. And then he suggested I go to the college where he went because he was a writer. And, and I did that because my boyfriend was gonna be out at school in Ohio as well. So I thought that would be you know, a plus. But I didn't, I made it you know, sophomore year partway through and then I was back home again because I ended up being um, um, half Italian and, and I was raised to believe that I was the caretaker of most of the family. So the, I think it was the guilt more than anything of being away from home 
that kept bringing me back home versus staying in college. Mm -hmm. And I did that three times. I, three times I left and three times I came back without getting my college degree. So then I did the next thing on the checklist back in that day and I got married. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, I was, I was being, I was following the program, I guess. Yeah. So, so how, how did that go? It didn't go very well. It was, I, I ended up meeting um, my second husband. I worked in an, an air conditioning business and we ended up starting our own air conditioning company. And so I worked in the office and we, you know, we had a very successful business. We had a beautiful home that I had renovated. Um, I did everything the society told me that was supposed to make me happy, but I, I still felt like something was missing inside. Mm -hmm. and so then I had an experience one afternoon where I was talking to a friend of mine and I said to her, I feel like I'm just a giant head walking around this planet. And she suggested to me that I may want to try a codependency workshop. It was a four-day workshop, and it was a psychodrama program where you literally acted out. You had people in, in the group help you act out what was happening in your life when you were growing up. And that helped me understand why it was safer most times to be in my head than it was to be in my body. And um, this particular counselor that I had during this workshop suggested that maybe it would be a good idea for me to get into therapy and work through some of these issues that were making it less um, easy for me to come back down into my body and was staying in my head. So I did that and within six months I was back in college because he, he planted the seed, this therapist did, and he said, you know, you're really intelligent. Maybe you should be going back to college. And I jumped right on it and ended going back to school to get my social work degree. And I completed my bachelor's in social work. And then I got my master's. And it was, it was a good experience because I did a, um, a year-long internship in a psych, on a psychiatric unit of a um, psychiatric hospital on an adolescent unit. And then right after that, I got a job working as a crisis counselor in high school. So in a lot of ways, it helped me understand where I had lost parts of myself as an adolescent. So in, kind of like returning to the scene of the crime in many ways. Um, and it was a very fun job in the beginning, but then there was a lot of crisis that was happening in the high school and kids were dying. And my role shifted into being a grief counselor and, um, and by this time, um, should I, let me back up and talk about the, well, you can finish that, finish what happened there. Okay. Um, I, the stress was getting to me. I've been eight years there and between what was happening at the high school and I had gone through a divorce, um, and my body was shutting down and I was having weird symptoms and the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on. And I did a workshop with um, Gabor Mate on his book called When the Body Says No. And that was very informative. And then probably a month after that workshop, I was walking through the halls of the high school and I heard a voice from inside of me that said, I will die if I stay here. And that was when I had been contemplating moving to, to the West Coast, but I think it was back to the, the guilt, you know, back from what used to bring me home from college three times. I felt guilty leaving the kids in the high school and leaving the situation that was going on in that town. But when I got the message that my body said, I'm going to die if I stay here, I knew it was time to leave. And that was what prompted me to finally make the, the trek across the country. Where did you go? I came to Northern California. Okay. And then what did you do? <laughs> then I, I came here to do a holistic life coaching program. Mm -hmm. and part of what I understood from being in high school and doing social work was that it was limited in, in how I could serve these kids and also who I could be. Like I had, I couldn't be the spiritual side of me, the natural side of me, the, you know, the nature connection. None of that was, was able to be brought into the, the, um, the process with them. So I came out here to do a holistic life coaching program and it was good to a point, but it seemed to me too, that it was more up and out. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I needed to learn how to come down and in. Mm -hmm. So 
So, uh, so I stayed for the program. I got certified as a life coach. And then I had seen on a telesummit, I saw this Qigong instructor and there was just this immediate connection with the way that he was speaking and the way that he integrated nature and all the moves with Qigong. And I, so I went out for walks a couple, you know, a couple mornings in a row and I put it out to the universe is Qigong my next, my next step. And three days later, three days in a row, I, I heard my, cl my cat making this weird racket out on the patio. And I went outside and each three days, there was a praying mantis that he was playing with. And I had no idea, I'd never seen a praying mantis before. So I Googled, what is this green bug? Came up with a praying mantis and I have the animal totem book. And I looked it up in the book and it said, the keynote on it is working with stillness. And then they mentioned Qigong. Oh. In there. So I thought, okay, there's my, there's my answer. Qigong is my next step. So, and that, that has been a tremendous healing journey for me because it had, the very first day that I did the teacher training, he said, I am here now, drop down. And I burst into tears immediately because I, no one had ever given me the permission to drop in and I didn't really know how to drop in. But the fact that he was giving me a step-by-step -step process, it's been a game changer for me. You know what, it, what's interesting, Leslie, it's like, it's like I say a lot of times we get to have ourselves back. Like you were clearly a person who knew that naturally when you were a kid and you were outside. Yeah. All right. And and riding so every, horses. Right. Yeah. So every time someone says, you know, you're so connected with animals and nature and all that. And I, I know you say a little more about it, but every time something like that gets told to you, you go, it's like, you know it already. Mm hmm right like you like that's what you cried like oh yeah this is i know what this is mm -hmm. and uh, so tell us a little bit more you know kind of some of those turning points that have allowed you to begin to get this whole consciousness back about nature like i know there's like the, you told me about this a dream you had there and a there's a few other of these kind of moments that have really awakened you okay um well one of the big awakening moments a couple of them and and this is why it helped me to trust slowly what these voices were telling me when i was still doing this studying for the social work exam so it was probably i don't know 2003 and i was sitting at my kitchen table and studying and i heard a voice that said all you have to do is love yourself and everything will be okay and now that was a very weird voice for me because usually the voices that were coming from inside of me were not all that kind but it, it seemed like that was the beginning seed that was being planted. And then shortly after that, it may have been six months later, um, my husband, now ex my husband at the time, we were, the two of us were out in Sedona, Arizona for a vacation. And I happened to be reading the book called The Alchemist at the time. And every morning I would go out for a walk by myself and three mornings in a row, and this is, this is, and I, Okay, so I, I heard a voice that said, you will be flying solo soon, three mornings in a row. And I, at the third morning, I realized the same vehicle had passed me each time I heard that voice. And it wasn't until the third day that I realized it was a pickup truck with a trailer pulling a hot air balloon behind it. So, and I didn't know what that meant. It was just, again, it was planting the seeds. You're going to be flying solo soon. And within... 10 months, I had, I had finished my social work program. I had gotten the job at the high school and November of that year, I ended up moving out of my marriage and that had never been a thought in my mind when I heard that voice, but the prompting kept pulling me that there's something more you're being called to do. And a month after, about, not too long after that, I went down to Virginia to visit the friend that had suggested I do the codependency program and we ended up hot air ballooning. <laughs> so I thought, okay, so there's really a method to, I mean, this is not, there's something that's guiding me that I need to trust here, wow. you know? <laughs> so, so that was in 2004, and a lot happened between 2004 and 2012, the next time that the dream happens. But there was many kids that had passed away at the high school, 
and, and I did the grief work with them. And then my mother died in 2010. My four cats died. The divorce happened. I mean, it was just my whole life was getting restructured and I didn't realize it at the time, but I had, so January of 2012, I was reading a book called your soul's journey. And in this book, it talks about, there's many, each chapter has a different, um, you know, whether it's illness, whether it's addiction, whether it's something there's, you know, what, why, why your soul may have chosen to experience this process, this lifetime. And it made me think because I had been more in the victim role most of my life thinking life's out to get me, but it was a total shift and wow, maybe I did choose this path, you know, and what would I have wanted to learn with that? And when I read the chapter that spoke to me the most, um, it said that I chose to come into this lifetime to have parents that I would not be able to connect with and that my reason for that was because I wanted to connect with div the divine directly. So I'm lying in bed thinking, wow. So all these years when I couldn't connect with my mom, it wasn't because she didn't love me. It was that she loved me enough to play the role of someone that I could not connect with. Wow. And as a kid, I had interpreted as that she didn't love me, but in reality, she loved me and played the soul role. So I would have the lessons that I needed to get what I wanted to get in this lifetime. Wow. <laughs> and I, I was a person that didn't remember my dreams a whole lot. That night, my mother came into my dream for the first time and we were standing in the grocery store and she said to me, we're, we're staring at our feet and she says to me, now, Leslie, it's not enough for you just to change that story. Now you have to walk with it and work it in. And that I woke up the next day knowing intuitively that that meant that it was just, it wasn't a mind shift. It was going to be a whole body shift that I needed to do because my, both my mother and her parents died never being in their bodies. And they had all the health situations of what, of what was happening when you're not in your body. So it was all, it was like a wake up call for me. I either walk the path that they walked or I start learning how to get into my body and do some healing work here. And did you find that, that you started to heal? Like, remember you said you had all these weird things that you didn't know what they were. And when you left that job and started this path, did things start to change in your body? Yes, little by little. And it's been five years since I learned Qigong. The last blood test I had was the best that I've ever had. Wow. You know, wow. all these things. I mean, I had, you know, all thyroid, all these things are normal that had always been, you know, questionable. Wow. And so where has this taken you? What is some of the more current work you've been doing and what's been, you know, moving you forward and opening up and integrating, say a little bit more, and you can, you know, you can talk about in story some, but, or the, just where has this led you to, um, and the way you see things and the way things are happening for you and what is it like now? <laughs> now I feel like I have been rechilding and rewilding myself. <laughs> You know, little by little, um, I spend a lot of time in nature. I ended up volunteering for an organic uh, garden project when I a couple years ago. And the metaphors are endless with, with you know, gardening and composting and, um, you know, regenerating and, you know, and just learning how plants grow. So I see the connection between nature all the time. Um, and... And I, I, I want to back up a second. Uh, there was a, I had a session before I moved to the West Coast with someone, and I don't remember if she was a shamanic practitioner or what she was. It was an over-the-phone conversation. And she said to me, you are a shapeshifter. And she suggested that I order this book called the, I think it's Nature Speaks, or Na Nature Speaks, it's an animal totem book. And I have been working with that book ever since then, when I see an animal coming repetitively, like I did with the, um, or a bug, like the, the praying mantis, I know that I'm getting a message and that there's some sort of guidance there. So I have been following the threads. Um, I've ended up, I feel like I'm, I'm unlearning an awful lot of what I learned in, you know, life, you know, both inherited programs and the social work programs and that kind of thing. And I've been learning from shamanism, from Qigong, 
and in astrology as of late. That, that's helped me to integrate a, a few different pieces too. But I feel like I am reawakening this natural ability that I had when I was a kid and I feel like there's more vitality in my body. Like my creative side didn't die, you know, when I was growing up. Like I was able to renovate homes and decorate and be creative in those ways. It was the vitality and that, that I don't know, the wild energy that I had when I was riding horses that I kept longing for. Like where is it and where did it go? And that's coming back and being harnessed in a way that it's not, um, it's not where I, I feel like I'm completely out of the box or I'm being stuffed in a box, that I'm able to balance my nervous system enough to let it come out when it's natural and then be able to, you know, quiet back down at nighttime and fall asleep and that sort of thing. So it's a yin-yang balance, I suppose. <laughs> and so talk a little bit about your experience about, you know, being on this interview series, bringing it out in the world, because I remember you telling me, Leslie, that it was very meaningful to you to hear other women in in story speaking on one of my interview series, and now here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe it. <laughs> I, I, um, the program that you were doing back in last March, and I was very um, drawn to the the women that were in your group and the stories that they were telling. And that it, it was possible for just a natural, you know, for, without being an expert in anything, to be able to tell your story. And so I, my intuition told me this was my next step. And I joined in story. And what's been happening for me is that um, I feel like each week we do a guided process. And I feel like now that Qigong has helped me build the stronger internal structure, that every week there's another child part of me that is coming back home and feels safe to now be here. And so I feel like I'm befriending lost parts of myself for all different ages. I mean, from the very start, I think the very first journey I did with you, I was climbing a tree. That was my process. So it's like these parts of me that I had when I was a kid are coming back and being integrated. And I feel like... I am now a safe person to allow these, all these different parts of me to be here without the critical voice shutting them back down. Because I, as much as it was an outside voice in the beginning putting me in a box, then it was my own voice that was a lot of times shoving me back in the box. And there's a, you said that, that in the, you compared in story to a story, like the cubs or the lion oh, the, oh, or something like so, that. Because the reason why you say it like that is because this is so much about what in story helps us do is use, you're so good with image and metaphor. And um. Okay, so in Qigong, there's a move called the tigress gathers her cubs. And, and you're, you're basically pulling your arm out and you're pulling it back into your power center. And I feel like that's what the weekly process, or the weekly journey that we do with in story, it's like each week I feel like there might, the tigress me is pulling back another part of the cub that needed to come back home. And it's, it's the primal energy. It's that wild instinctual energy that I think, first of all, it helps improve our health and then it helps improve in, intuition. And it, it just, it helps me feel more my true self. Every week I feel like I'm a little more me than I was before we had that journey. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, and the women in the group, I think, also, like, that way that it's safe is so different, I think, than what it was like for most of us. Yes, yes, because we were, we're, everybody's having a different piece of it, so sometimes somebody will share something, and then that helps you remember something, and the fact that it's a safe environment for us all to unravel, you know, unravel the stories, unpack the box, and be seen from each other then it's then it helps to integrate it as well because it I, I, most of my life i feel like i've been walking around with these little stories but there was no place to go to share them so they weren't getting fully integrated in me right that, that's a really powerful way to think about it when you can't share them they don't integrate which I, that, that that is a really powerful there it, it, there is a lot of power in in the realm of story in many levels and in fact 
tell that story about how your I think when you said it was your therapist who told you to write a book or something like that. Like, yes. tell about that. Yes. Um, I had been through a pretty stressful event with the, my divorce was final. There was a lot, there was a lot of stress happening and I was on vacation, the summer vacation from school when I was working at the high school. And he said to me, I think you need to write children's books. And he said, and this is the title, my little world. And I was like, Oh my God, that's a wonderful idea. I will definitely do that. And so every day I would go to the beach and I would see what was around and then I would come back home and see what animals showed up that day. And then I would take the animal totem book out and read what that said. And I, I wrote a series of, there was, I think it was 12 different stories of each day this little girl was connecting. And here's the lightning piece. It was a lightning bug that was her mentor that was helping her do the guy. It was like the guy, it's basically back to in story. He was helping her do the guided journey of embodying these animals and learning from the animal. And I thought that really is who I am. And literally I wrote that, that series in 2008 and four years later when I moved to California, I feel like I'm living the process that this little girl was doing in these stories. Wow, wow. And what's so cool about it is then you become able to then help the next person to unpack that part of themselves. Yeah. And um, so I know you have like a little thing just to give us a little bit of an experience of this embodiment feeling and the difference between kind of being stuck in the head and being more embodied. So maybe we can do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just sit any way you want. If you're cross-legged, if you've got your feet on the floor and put one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Okay. And close your eyes. And this is very, not, no judgment here. Just, just tuning in. Take a deep breath. And see where you feel, which hand you feel moving more. Is it the upper hand at your heart, chest level, or is it down by your belly center? Well, I do honestly feel it more in my chest. <laughs> okay. And I do too right now too, because we've been talking. Okay. So as you, as you keep breathing deeply, see if you can get the breath to come all the way down past the top hand and into the belly. And see if you can give your, your belly permission to expand outward as you breathe down. Because what you're doing as, as the breath drops down, it's and when it comes down to the belly, we're shifting our nervous system from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic. Can you sense the belly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I could feel completely, as soon as I moved my breath down there, my whole body just went, whoosh, you know. Okay. I just felt a, a whole sense of like this relaxation and stillness and kind of release. See, and that what happens is during the day and like when we're talking and when it comes up, that's the yang energy that's rising. And then the yin energy is coming back down. We can get back down to the belly breathing. And that, you know, we want to, we wanted to rise somewhat during the day so that we have action and, you know, it's like when the sun comes up, but then at nighttime, when the sun's setting, we want the energy to start coming back down. And the more we can trust and partner with our body to breathe de deep down in the belly, the more we stay out of the, you know, the active mind going all the time. And we're coming from our instincts and the truth of who we are more than old programs. 
Yeah, it's, I love it. Uh, it's so powerful. Every, you know, every process that you'll ever do with anyone that's going to mm-hmm. take you in any kind of deep thing will always start with breath. Yeah. Always. It's amazing. So powerful. So, all right. So tell us a little bit about your free gift. Okay. So I've written up a, um, a it's called the, the, your crystal cave and it's a journey of walking up a mountain as you're releasing your, your worries and your tension and you're going into a crystal cave and it's a self healing journey. And I recommend that you read it through the first time and, you know, just to get a feel of the whole thing and then maybe read it out, out loud to yourself the second time. So you're hearing your own voice. And then if you can, the best thing to do is to record it in your own voice so you can listen to it. And what happens is when your body hears a vibration of your own voice, doing this journey, you're helping to integrate more of your own self together. That's super cool. I love that. And, and it's a neat way to feel kind of empowered about the guided process. Um, so everybody, what I suggest is that click the link, download the process and go through those three steps and then share what happened with us in the In Story Show Facebook group. You'll also have a, um, a, an email, you'll get an email from Leslie and you'll be able to email her back and you're gonna offer some free discovery calls, right? For people. Yes. Um, so that, look, this is, it's so important with all of this. When something resonates deeply with you, take a next step to see where it leads you. And so if you really know that you have all that in your head and can get embodied then, do Leslie's process and then email her and take a next step. Cause I really believe that we are here to help each other to do that. Um, okay. So to wrap up, leave us with a few last thoughts, words of inspiration. <laughs> okay. Well, can I do one with the one more little? Oh yeah. 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 I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you take your fingers and you put them together and you rub your your nails back and forth several times pretty hard okay and then you feel open your hands do you yeah. feel that energy yeah okay so that's this is the healing energy that we can get moving through our whole bodies so that would be and this is what i've been missing this is what it was like okay you know i knew that as a kid so that would be my biggest takeaway is that that energy is always here for us to unpack again. It just got closed up and sometimes there's some tension that's holding it in there, but that vitality has never gone away. It's waiting for us to find it again. And, and you know, just to add to that is that that was actually literally physically healing for you, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. So seriously, people. <laughs> <laughs> This is the coolest stuff ever. So do her process, reach out to Leslie, share with us in the group, because we want you to be able to feel better, come out of hiding and dare to be seen so you can share all your cool stuff with the world too. (laughs) So Leslie, so cool. Thank you so much. And everybody, as I always say in farewell, remember to go out in the world, share your story, live your purpose and be a blessing. Bye folks. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs>